Wow, so many announcements. So this is your one-stop shop for all things Apple, because not only did they announce all of their new services today in the big March 25th event, but also the week prior, they announced all of these hardware updates to the iPad, Apple AirPods, and also updated versions of the iMac. So I'm gonna talk about everything in this video, because Apple invited me out to actually check out the iPad hands-on, so away. We go. Four things you need to know from the event. Number one is the Apple News Plus, where you can now have one subscription, $9.99, for all of your magazine and news needs. Number two is the Apple credit card. Yes, my, 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 credit cards. They're going to rule the world. Do they already rule the world? Number three, we have Apple Arcade, which is high quality gaming on all of your Apple devices, multiple titles for one single price. And last but certainly not least, Apple TV Plus. They say the new home for the world's most creative storytellers. We will start with Apple TV. The new app, it's more polished, more things in one place. And the biggest addition is Apple TV channels. So now this is a way to go in and purchase HBO, Stars, Epics, all of these separate subscriptions through Apple TV just using your Apple login. My, 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 So as you can imagine, there's going to be a lot of content in one place. Say you have a Hulu and Netflix streaming service subscription alongside of these Apple TV channels that you've purchased alongside maybe the YouTube app. There's so much stuff. So Apple basically says, hey, these two sections of Up Next and For You are going to be a beautiful curated place for you to just watch your TV shows, what you're going to be interested in. And it aggregates basically all the options you have from all of your different apps and channels for you to watch. Now, if you're like me, I was watching this and I was just like, oh, this is a lot, right? We got a lot of content going around. The past 10 years, as things have gotten more separated in between streaming services and different subscriptions, everyone now feels a need to combine them into these bundles, into one destination like Apple TV. But now that there's so many different places to watch it, obviously Apple TV is trying to solve that, but everything is just confusing right now. In between Netflix, YouTube, and Hulu, like I'm, I'm good. Apple TV is now going to be available on Samsung, LG, Sony, and Vizio smart TVs. The app will also be available on Roku and Fire TV. So not only is the content everywhere, but the distribution is everywhere along with all of this hardware. So yes, the lines are getting blurred. And in the words of Hank Green, I think he said it best in this tweet, I think we may be in a content bubble, y'all. <laughs> And with that, the new Apple TV shows. Apple doesn't just wanna perfect this ecosystem, but now they're in the business of TV, movies, series, all of the things. They shuffled out a ton of celebrities to give teasers of their shows, of their movies, although we didn't get a lot of previews. They just talked about it. Jennifer Aniston, Reese Witherspoon, and Steve Carell are doing a show called The Morning Show. There's a show called Little America, highlighting the everyday lives of immigrants, whether they're inspirational, romantic, showing the ups and downs of their life. I think the long story short of Apple getting in this game is more stories are going to be told, which is always a good thing. It was interesting that they opened up with Steven Spielberg, given that he was just a news headline saying that Netflix films shouldn't be able to win Oscars, but they ended with Oprah. Hi. She's producing documentaries, but also a world book club. <laughs> I guess she's going to be interviewing authors, streaming it via Apple. Again, it's one of those things where we don't really know exactly what it's gonna be, but they did a really good job proving that they know a ton of celebrities. The new Apple Arcade. So this will be a dedicated section in the App Store. It's a subscription gaming service that you pay monthly and get to play the games from some of the best game developing companies out there. And you can play them cross-platform, whether it's on your iPhone or your MacBook. Apple says that they're working very closely with the developers to make these games. And in the videos that they showed, the developers were expressing that they could not do this without Apple's help. So it seems like Apple is pretty involved with the development process of these games, making sure that you have high quality, good stuff coming at you all the time if you're paying that monthly fee. And yes, there is offline play. Apple News Plus. So for $9.99, you're not going to just get the curated news from Apple, but you get access to hundreds of magazines, all of their articles for only $9.99. Rolling Stone, Time, Vogue, Wall Street Journal, and also the LA Times, and many, many others. Given the amount of stories and articles in the curation from the Apple team, this is a fantastic deal on our side. And my guessing is that Apple can offer so many more eyeballs than these magazines are getting so far that they can justify that price. I'm sure the rev split will be dependent on who gets the attention. My first reaction was, oh my gosh, you know, normal magazines are literally half 
advertisements. How are magazines going to make money off of this? But Apple has access. Everyone has one of these. So I think that's what they're offering these publications, a brand new audience, a ton of eyes. I'm curious what you guys think about all of these new services. Are you going to pay for Apple Arcade, for Apple News Plus, Apple TV Plus? Will I get the Apple Card? Probably not. I am so entrenched in the whole Amex Delta Miles system that I don't think I could ever go back if I didn't have miles and lounge access. Of course, this is just the beginning for Apple Card and all of these services, but we have a lot of options for entertainment. I don't know why I said that like, like a question. I guess my only question is like, are we getting closer to this Wally future where by and large, everything you need to be happy is that too depressing? Cuckoo. All right, all right, all right. I don't wanna to get too depressing because Apple is a very exciting company and it's always very exciting for me to get my hands on their tech because they are one of the companies that enable me to do what I do. And so I think it's a very exciting future for content creators as consumers of content. You know, there's so, so much out there that I feel like we just need one big bundle of stuff. We just need to take all the channels, all the streaming services, maybe put it in like one big black box. We just pay Apple the hundred a month for everything, right? Look at cable, cause cable's now. Cable's cool, cable's hot. Everything is cyclical. Goes round, round, round. We break things up to put them back together. If you survived this long, congratulations. There's more Apple announcements to cover. If I was a smart YouTuber, I would have separated all this, but here we are. The hardware announcements. We have updates to the iMacs, Apple AirPods, and also iPads. There's a new iPad Air and Mini on the block. Apple invited me to get some hands-on time. So here you go, here are the new iPads. So I've always been spectacle about, spectacle, is that a word? Skeptical. Skeptical. <laughs> So I've always been skeptical about the mini size, because at this point, right, we, we have our iPhone Pluses, XLs, 10Ss, the massive iPhones, but as I hold it in my hand, I'm thinking, I'm thinking about college Sarah, who took all of her notes in Notability. Ah, Notability, such a good note-taking app. I haven't used it since the college days in 2013, though, so I wanted to check in, make sure it's still a bomb note-taking app. And also, I found all of my college notes in my old Google Drive to an old email, and my notes were fire. Yes, this was before the Apple Pencil. You would just use these weird stylus with the little plastic thing at the end. <sighs> okay, back to the video. And the fact that I can just grip this iPad and just go for it with, with the keyboard, um, and then also just sitting here writing with it, I mean, it feels good. It feels like a really good size in the notes app when you're typing, 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 if it feels your hand on it, it automatically just goes into um, writing mode. Look at that. And that's my signature, so now you guys can write some checks, some Sarah Deech checks. Okay, so we have our hands on the new iPad Air, which is $4.99, and the new iPad Mini comes in at $3.99 now with support for the first generation pencil, the Apple Pencil, and also the Logitech Crayon. So size-wise, how are we looking? I've actually gotten the chance to play around a lot with this mini and me personally I've never had a mini but being able to just grip it with one hand you know we got to game with with the dual hand I think I was doing pretty great on that uh, car racing game oh yeah I'm getting this now So this iPad mini has the A12 Bionic chip, so the same chip that you have in the 10s, the 10s Max, and also a 7.9 Retina display. So we have the usual colors. I really like the space gray. It's definitely a mood. And we have a lot of new cases. We have a lot of new covers. Um, and there's this new color called Papaya, but let's be honest, it's really peach. The new iPad Air sports a larger screen and also gets a 70% boost in price processing power, all thanks to that A12 Bionic chip. The screen still has a 60 hertz refresh rate, not the 120 hertz found in the beefier iPad Pro. Now the mini, it doesn't have support for Apple's smart keyboard, but you'll be able to connect a Bluetooth keyboard to it, no problem. The iPad Air is compatible with Apple's smart keyboard, but if you want the folio, that's just dedicated to the iPad Pro. The cool thing about checking out these iPads with Apple is they showcased a lot of great apps. The vector-based illustrator app where they just kept zooming in and zooming in. 
that blew my mind. My favorite app highlight was Moleskine's new notes app. That's right, the company who makes these lovely notebooks that you've learned to love. I personally use this side to write all of my day-to-day -day things. Well, now they have an iPad app, which is slightly shocking because they're potentially just putting themselves out of business, but I think they realize, hey, people are still gonna want to write on pen and paper, so might as well take the people who wanna write notes on their iPads, right? The new 21.5 inch 27 inch iMacs are now refreshed with the latest and greatest 8th generation and 9th generation Intel Core processors. I think the most interesting thing out of all these updates is you can now take the 21 inch version of the iMac and properly spec it out. Now you have the options of using the Vega graphics in these machines. If you want a powerful workstation for heavy graphics stuff, you want that Vega graphics. So it's nice that you have it as an option in the 21 inch now. Remind you the 9th generation Intel processors are reserved for the 27 inch, but if I were to build my ideal 21 inch iMac. Of course, I'd upgrade it to the i7 for 200. These iMacs also come with two Thunderbolt 3 inputs, which is pretty huge because even my fancy main gear PC doesn't have a Thunderbolt 3 compatible USB-C. So I recently spec'd out 21.5 inch iMac with an eighth generation i7, 16 gigabytes of RAM would come out to be $2,949. Whew, like that's, pri that's very pricey. But then you have to take into account you're getting a very nice 4K display that covers a wide range of colors very accurately. So if you're in the Apple ecosystem, maybe you're a video creator, you use Final Cut Pro, you want an all-in-one system with a great display, then yes, this actually makes sense. This will probably be the best all-in-one option out there, but of course, if you want to customize your monitor and your desktop, there are plenty of other options. And hey, if you use Adobe products who love NVIDIA graphics, you can find a machine that's just as powerful as this for a way cheaper price tag. And of course, a few moments for the well-beloved AirPods. I love them so much. I think, oh, don't get mad at me for saying this, it's one of the best inventions Apple has put out. No, dare I say it is the best invention Apple has put out since the iPhone. Nope, it's nothing new, but it fits so perfectly into my lifestyle, out and about, taking calls, listening to podcasts, listening to music while I ride on the train, while I do all the things, but the new H1 chip in the new AirPods allows it to have better battery life and allows you to switch in between devices quicker. So now on one charge, you can do five hours of listening time and three hours of talk time. And of course, the biggest feature upgrade and pretty much like the only one that's worthy to be talking about is the wireless charging case. Now you can wirelessly charge it, but it's gonna cost you a pretty penny at $1.99 for that case and the AirPods. You now have quick access to Siri to be able to say just, hey Siri, instead of double tapping on the AirPod. Wow, you made it to the end of the video. Congratulations. You should comment down below. Apple should have just bought Netflix and you'll be in the secret club. Congratulations. Let me know if you like this video. Hit that subscribe button down below for new videos every single week. And if you're new around here, I'm Sarah Dietschy, Rhymes with Peachy. You should have said that at the beginning. I make videos about tech and creativity, so you should subscribe, like I said before. Okay, bye. Bye.